Please come. We're going to start now in 7.10. You are all welcome to our April webinar. Um, for the month of April, we have a fantastic topic for you today, and uh, we will not waste much of our time anymore. We'll just quickly introduce our speaker for today. Uh, our speaker today is no other than um, Dr. Lucy Soraya Newman. Pardon me if I didn't pronounce it properly, please. He is a highly experienced international consultant and policy advisor with expertise in executive, non-executive, and consulting roles in the private, public, and non-profit sectors in Nigeria. She holds a doctorate in business administration, an MBA and a BSc in business administration, and an international director certification in corporate what? governance. Dr. Newman is the author of several professional articles and books, <clears throat> book chapters, and her latest book, The African Leaders, Tete a Tete, Navigating Entity Design and Prioritizing for Systems Outcomes, was released in October 2022. She is the recipient of several prestigious honors and awards, including the International Society for Performance Improvements, highest individual award, and, is, and she's happily married with three sons and a stepdaughter. And she's also a fellow of the Institute of Information Management for Africa, our own premier institute. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome Dr. Newman. Dr. Newman, please, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautiful introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and it's a very uh, great pleasure for me to be here with you this evening or this morning or this night, whichever side of the world you are. Thank you to the IIM for this invitation. It's an honor to be here. Uh, the topic we're going to be discussing uh, today is transformational leadership for systemic outcomes in information-driven age. Key issues are systemic outcomes. Transformational leadership has been a topic bandied around for more than a couple of decades. But as the world is going through all kinds of challenges um, and there are need, there's a need for solution, Systemic outcomes are very important for the big event. And in terms of that also, we live in a world and we're seeing the fourth industrial revolution and technology is becoming a key aspect of our lives. For instance, us being here, having a seminar virtually like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we would need to be in a room all seated together. So this is the essence of the topic, but this session is not going to be about the principles. Most leadership topics talk about the concept, talk about the principles and all that, but not much internal. This session, the content is like 70% putting a mirror before ourselves and looking at ourselves as leaders. Um, everything I'm going to speak about is not political, it's nothing just focused on transformation and leadership and it's purely an intellectual exercise. Therefore, I sincerely welcome feedback during the Q&A, and I look forward to hearing from as many people as would like to speak. And as we know that the chat box is also our platform for discussion. I have 10 sections over which we will be looking at some things this evening. The first one is we'll look at the objectives and approach to this session. Then we we'll just touch a little bit of the concepts and the value of transformational leadership so that we can all be on the same page. Then we'll look at information driven. I'm hearing some noise. Is there a problem? Yes, you want to share your screen? Uh, you can share your screen. If not, I'm sharing. I've already started sharing. Yeah, but uh, I can't see your screen. Is everybody seeing my screen? Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We are yet to not see yet, it. Ma. We are not what? seeing it. I've just been blabbing to myself. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I shared before, so I thought even during the introduction. Can you see my screen now? 
Yes, ma'am. We can see it now. Yes. Oh dear. So when I did when they did the introduction and everything, I had the screen. Be You've muted yourself. No, I had to mute everyone. So, that... so I now got affected. <laughs> so do we start from the beginning or we just proceed? I need. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you can. You can uh... I think we should proceed. Yeah, OK, so. I... OK, thank you. So I gave a disclaimer. It's okay. For us to be uh, focused that it's an intellectual discussion and it's not a political conversation, and we're going to focus on transformational leadership. I was just about to start going over the agenda when I was informed that my screen share was not working. So is this visible now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So yes, I mentioned. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. All right. So I mentioned that this presentation, the session is in 10 components. It has 10 main components. The first place is to look at objectives and approach to the session. The second one is we'll look at, I mentioned that this session, most leadership sessions, they talk about the concept, they talk about the principles, and they leave you there. But this session is going to be about us, looking at us, ourselves, maybe with a mirror in front of us. And content is about 70% internal, looking at ourselves internally as leaders. 10% is just concepts and um, an over overview. The other aspect is are looking at information-driven age, which is where we are now. Then the basics, we'll look at the basics of what we need as milestones, in the topic transformation and leadership. I'll go over some critical success factors, and this is where many leaders tend to fall flat, the self-awareness and self-development aspect. I will also share my own story. I'm still growing up, even though that, prof that profile sheds may seem like I've, I've completed my journey. I'm actually a little girl, I'm just starting. So I'll share my journey so far, and some things that have like been the light bulb moments for my, my time so far. Then I'll share some tools that I have developed, which I have used and I've found very useful. And the response to these tools have been very, very inspiring. I'll close with some candid advice and some action planning for us. And then we'll have Q&A. And for those of us that want to study further, there's a references section. At the end of the day is for us to, we recognize that many of us here, some of my mentors are actually in the group. <laughs> I see Dr. Dr. Konji, you know, she's, she's, she's my big sister, my big auntie. So some of them have been really, really doing this already. So it's just for us to reflect and look at things as live learners, this is what we do. For some of us, we're just starting and it is okay. So the objective of the session, a lot of pictures will come forth in this session. Every picture has a meaning and there's a purpose for it. And some of the pictures are from uh, free databases on uh, Google, but some of them are from Shutterstock, where I subscribe. And as a result of that, I buy some of these pictures. Approach to the session. I know that IIM is multi-dimensional, multi-locational, multi-racial. So this is a collective thing for us this evening that all of us were coming and looking at this session and this topic with a global mindset and um, multidimensional. In terms of that, we'll explore tools which we can use as individual leaders in career, in our society, on an incremental impact basis. Uh, then also there are some tools that we'll consider as individual for us to use, and there are some that... as leaders we could share with some of our team members and thereby enhance our journey of impact. Looking right, and then three focus areas. The task that we have, in, whether in our families, in our society or at work, the relationships we have, which are multidimensional also because each of us has multiple stakeholders. And then the process of collaboration. Um, this picture is on the right hand side is an avatar. I use it to represent myself proudly African and reflective as a thinker. 
On the left hand side, you will see a board with a light bulb. That light bulb is not a bulb, it's a doorway. And inside there's a lady with a portfolio. At the back of that board, you see a lot of scribbles, which are the concepts, the thinking that she brings to the world. Stepping out, you see the landscape of a city, what she has in her portfolio to offer as a transformational leader. So the approach to this session will have some uh, poll questions, which we will take very shortly. And then we'll look at some tools and then I'll share some experiences. And then I would give some tips on how we can do our action planning to extend our impact. So that is the way we would go. And at this point, I would kindly request that the poll be deployed for us to respond. Okay. Thank you. The poll has been launched. So um, can, we, can we kindly attend to the poll? Uh, the poll questions is been launched. Yeah. Yeah, the question has been launched, please. Uh, so we need uh, if we can, yes, if we can do that quickly, we can move into our subject. Only two questions have been attended out of 31. Please, can we participate quickly? <laughs> can we just quickly participate to, to help us to go into a more deep dive? Question? Yes. Yeah, we have people coming up. Six now. Hello, are we on? Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Oh, thank you. We are attending to the poll questions, please. Please, for comments, for comments and uh, and stuff, we should use the comment section, please. Thank you. So we got 20, 20 out of 33, 60%. Yeah, so, hmm. yeah, we're getting, um, we, we end it when we have 25 because of time. That was the target. Yeah, 25, we're going to end it. Yeah. Yes. 25 is going to be about 60 or 70 percent. It's as if they, everybody heard after 21, there's been a pause. <laughs> okay, we've done about three minutes so far also. 
I think we should end. There's nothing happening after, okay, 22. No, we need to consider people's internet might not be as fast as ours. So yes. The dependency. I think we can cut it at 22 for time's sake. All right, so um, we're gonna end the poll. So I think we need to end the poll. Um, the poll Ended. Okay. So okay. these are our findings. <laughs> can we see the poll results? I've shared. Okay, so it's very interesting. Um, is leadership positional? 57% <laughs> of us said yes. 39 said no, find out. <laughs> Are leaders born or made? There seems to be an equal uh, balance between both and they are made. Many of us do not believe they are born. Very interesting. <laughs> Then, um, are transformational leaders born or made? Wow, when I saw this, I was like, yes, fantastic, they are made. <laughs> so there's a both, they are both born and made. Um, this one is, are you transformational leader? Yes, 28, 26%. I want to become. Wonderful, that means we're in the right place and we're going to have a wonderful conversation. Do you trust easily? That was a surprise because <laughs> I came with a mindset, I must confess, I came with a mindset that, you know, information people, technology, audit, review, usually it's part of our job not to trust everybody. That, that's why we check and verify, but everybody here is trusting. That's interesting. So it was 22%. Uh, not so, and that's not a surprise. I actually expected that to be much more. And then do people tend to trust you? Amazing, almost 100%, <laughs> yes. So this is where we are, we'll see how it works out. Thank you very much for, for participating in this conversation. So now let's move forward. Is there anything inside the survey that is a surprise to anybody? Uh, just note that, and when we go to Q&A, you can tell us if it was anything that was surprising. So our first section, after looking at the objective and approach to the session is transformational leadership, the concept and the value of transformational leadership. Like every other picture that I said, the picture on the right shows um, a crystal ball built held in a, in a hand. And the big thing about transformational leadership is encapsulated in this picture that it is you, the leader, reflecting with your environment and ensuring that there's a balance. But there's a lot of reflection in transformational leadership and there's a lot of balance required between the internal person and the environment so that everything will be in sync. So to get us started, transformational leadership, the concept and the value uh, and its importance. Leadership is about creating a way for people to contribute to making something extraordinarily happen. If you just gather people together and they're all sitting together, they're bodying together, uh, there's, there's, there's likely not much happening in terms of leadership. Leadership is about movement, moving forward. And it is complex, it's elaborate. Of recent, because of many problems all over the world, it's attracting global interest. So there's a big search for leaders. Um, it's desired both at, at corporate, national, and even family levels and on global levels. It's linked to sustainability, continued performance improvement, and best practices. Leadership issues that have brought these things to the fore, whether it's on the individual side, family side, corporate, national, or societal level is resource management. 
there's scarcity of resources and there's a need for skillful management of resources. People are agitated, they want to hear more, they want to know more, they want to be informed, they want to own their life. So there's a hunger for information. And I think our, our institute is working hard on that in terms of storage, analysis, retrieval, distribution, and control. Poverty, migration, you know, with exploding population, limited resources that have been discovered because many have not yet been discovered. So there's perceived poverty and it's bad. Social responsibility in terms of taking care of other people, humanity. And then the big one is higher need for accountability and governance. Overall leadership is influence. I wish our leaders would understand that it's about influence, not coercion or control. It transforms potential to reality. I like the description by Brian Tracy. Um, he says it is the ability to elicit extraordinary performance from ordinary people. So like other pictures that I have spoken about, this picture on the left-hand side is, um, is, it encapsulates everything about leadership per se. It has to do with contribution. Contribution is not taking away, it's contribution, responsibility, vision, motivation, being a mentor. It's about ethic. It's about influence, teamwork, communication, decision-making. Many leaders don't have capacity to decide. And people keep saying, move on, move on. And the person is saying, well, hold on, hold on. Then there's support and there's management of diverse issues. So who is a leader? A leader is a person who influences a group of people towards a specific task. So if there's no specific result and there's no influence there and there's no leadership. Leaders are recognized by their capacity to care for others, communicate clearly. How do they emerge? I'm, I don't have, I don't tend to read my slide. I'm going to be picking the key issues. Um, leaders emerge, there are three forms that have been put forward and that informed that uh, poll question we had, whether they're born, whether they're developed or both. Some have the personality trait to lead and may naturally uh, emerge as leaders. And if the way you want to see this, when you have children of under 10, give them a task and you see the natural leaders come out. Uh, then also, sometimes also the leadership can come out as a result of training that they've received from their parents, taking responsibility from age three. When they are 10, you put them together, they emerge as the leaders of the group. Crisis can make somebody <laughs> become a leader based on what has happened. Sometimes it's a natural disaster. A, a living example of that is the president of Ukraine. You know, he is a president, natural leader to lead a political place and complete his time and go, but there was a war. And now he's both a war leader and a national president. Then the other one is people can choose to become leaders. People can learn leadership skills. And that is our focus of our discussion. Those who choose to become very effective leaders who have said for the rest of my life, I want to be improving every time and I want to do better and I want to be more impactful. These are the transformational leaders. So we are narrowing down on our topic. I've been gone expansively through the leadership concept. The concept was introduced by James McGregor Burns. He's a presidential biographer, he has a very good Wikipedia page and he has a lot of work he has done, but he has done things in terms of transactional leadership, uh, transformational leadership and aspirational leadership and all that. But the one that really stuck is the transformational leadership work he did. The transformational leaders differentiate the transformational uh, uh, leaders from other type of leadership. And they are also interested in developing their followers to their fullest potential. They see the potential in their followers even more than the followers themselves see in themselves. So therefore the transformation leader focuses on developing systems and then the capacity of that system to thrive, innovate and work in terms of achieving its objectives who are transformational leaders. We're wrapping up here now. Transformational leaders have the ability to clearly articulate the vision of the future. 
one big thing, for instance, uh, one ancient transformation leader they talk about is Alexander the Great. He had a team of an army. He conquered many parts of the ancient civilization and his team always knew what the mission was all about. And he was always there with them right ahead to conquer. They are myth makers and storytellers. That's how they get people's hearts and minds together. But they're also not flattery. They don't flatter. They capture people's imagination with vivid descriptions of a wonderful future they will build together. The word there is together. Transformational leadership categories are three. There's the intellectual person, which is a person with a vision that can bring about transformation by raising consciousness. We find this in academia, especially. We see some professors, they see you in your freshman year and they see a leader and they talk to you, they carry you as their research associate and all that. Those are intellectual leaders. Uh, then we have the reform mindset. <laughs> reform mindset, I'm laughing because the reform mindset requires participation of a large number of allies, various reform. And then there's non-reform goals on their own, which means that with endless divisions, one thing about the reform mindset is that they splinter a lot. They start with the founder who has the vision, and then some people who are the lieutenants will feel like the leader is not doing a great thing. Then they splinter, they splinter, they splinter. Then there's the revolutionary. Many of the countries that have independence by war and by fight, they have revolutionary transformation leaders, which involves creation of a new ideology rising a movement and zeal to overthrow the status quo and revolutionize. These type of people come together and it is a new birth at the end of that and it's usually a large group. And most times it's either a new school of thought, a new followership or a new country or all that kind of thing. So what are the, where we will hang the issue, we're not going to go into practical wrapping up on the concept and value is to remember, if we don't remember anything I've said from the beginning, is that transformational leadership involves developing the vision Selling the vision, the word there is selling, it's not instructing, it's selling the vision because people need to buy into that vision. Finding the way forward and leading the change. He word there is leading, that means the informational leader is a participant in the process. So I gave us the example of Alexander the Great who defines what they need to do and then he's there with them right in the trenches. Big question, are there transformational leaders in the audience? is a mixed bag and I know that we're all here. Some of us have been already on this and can talk about this even in their sleep. If we remember the questions that were asked, poll question three and four, which asked us about transformation leader, they made or born and are you a transformational leader? So that's where we park it. And now the bottom line question is of a truth, transformational leaders are required today even more than ever before in the world. And I want to reference a record. Uh, the PwC Global CEO Survey, they do that every year. And it's usually, the result is usually published at Davos, at the World Economic uh, Forum. And the last one is the 26th in the edition. I'm an alumni of PwC, so I participated in a few and I always get the report whenever they release immediately the day they speak about it in Davos. So this last one that they did, the CEOs recognize the potential for disruption ahead. Fact, nearly 40% of the CEOs that participated think that their company will no longer be economically viable in a decade from now, if things continue at this current path. I just remembered Kodak. <laughs> then the pattern is consistent. This pattern of 10 years of services of companies is across a range of economic sectors technology, communication, telecoms, healthcare, and manufacturing. Underlying these figures is the consciousness among today's leaders that we're living through extraordinary times with five broad mega trends, climate change, technological disruption, demographic shifts, fracturing world, social instability that is reshaping business and realignment of political blocks across the world. So fact is they need, everybody needs transformation leaders at the family, at the corporate, at the national, and even on the global stage. What are the value drivers? This is IIM. So this picture on the right says, okay, what are the value drivers for us as 
transformation leaders in our space. It's about standards, it's about policy, it's about compliance, rules and regulations to ensure balance, sustainability, communication, and uh, participation. What are the value drivers? Value drivers of transformational leadership in this generation that we are, the fourth industrial revolution, is the leaders need to leverage the power of technology and information to change and grow. The leaders must be able to adapt to the, to the rapidly changing technological landscape and lose, use it optimally to attain objectives. The objectives are agreed and negotiated objectives. They're not dictatorial. An ability to communicate effectively. Am I audible? Because it's telling No response. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, is breaking. Pardon? And you, you are, you are, um, your voice okay. is breaking. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you can um kill the okay, video. But I'm audible, but I can hear you perfectly well. Okay, so I guess it depends on on our own uh, respective uh, internet. Okay. So, so we pray that everybody has a good connection, <laughs> depending on where you are. So they, they must be able to analyze and interpret data to make informed decisions and derive and drive innovation. And they must be able to identify trends and patterns in data and use this information to develop new product service. The key word there is new. We remember the issue of the CEO saying over the next 10 years, if they remain as they are, they will no longer be viable. So there's a need to for disruption, new thinking and progressive growth. By leveraging the power of technology and information, which we all know, transformation leaders can really drive growth and success in today's fast-paced environment. Overall, transformation leadership in information it requires a combination of strong leadership and people skills, technological savvy, savviness, <laughs> willingness to embrace change and innovation, high impact communication skills. So on that note, we've wrapped up on that and we're about to move to something else. This is where we start to get personal. We have gone over the concept We've confirmed the fact that transformation leadership is important. We've looked at it in the context of um, information-driven age and what type of skills are required of these leaders. And because of the audience here, I don't think I need to say what it is. If we had this session like 10 years ago, we we'll start asking who has an email, uh, who has, uh, who knows how to use, but thank God for COVID as a disruptor. <laughs> It has helped us to throw us forward by 10 years into um, space that we currently are and so many things are happening. So first things first is this uh, picture on the right with a pair of binoculars. Imagine yourself standing on a hill and looking at the landscape and looking out with the binoculars to see the mountain tops. That's what this session is about. The mountain tops, which are key things we need for transformation leadership. We define the concept. Now we're looking at the ingredients that make transformational leadership. And after this section, we'll start to look at ourselves and see how we get these ingredients in our perspective. On the left-hand side is layer. It's impossible, you know, it's impossible to be a transformational leader. And some people are so good at being team leaders, but they're not comfortable being anonymous. So they struggle with being a member of a team. Those people cannot be then they will not be very effective as transformation leaders. Transformation leaders are capable of leading a team and also serving on a team and following another leader. Sometimes they actually yield their leadership to a member of the team, depending on the task. Those who are not good transformation leaders can cannot deal with that. They struggle with that process. Then the other aspect of transformation leadership is the need for transparency. You need to have the courage to step out. Imagine yourself stepping out and being on a stage with all the floodlights on you. Every imperfection, whether you have pimples or you have a denture, 
the tool show. And a transformational leader should be willing to be that vulnerable, to show the humanity of yourself to your team. That actually endears. Why people think that de diminishes somebody, it actually endears one. The other side is humility. I like this picture. This is one of my good pictures. You see this U.S. Marine doing press-ups with his children. He's a father. He's showing them how to do press up. What he says is that to be an effective leader, don't demand what you don't believe, do, or live by. That would really discredit one as a transformational leader. But when they see you doing it and you say, let's do it, they don't even negotiate. They just jump in and start doing it. The other side is the man with the mask on the right-hand side. Some leaders show different faces at different times. Don't fake it. Be your true authentic self all the time. If they can predict you, then they can jump the hoops for you. But if they cannot predict you, they're not sure that you're there behind them for support. This is also one of my favorite, right? The one on the left-hand side, the, the monk with the tiger. We know that this action, if it was wrong, that guy's head, the brain will become breakfast for the tiger. But there's a level of trust between them and the person is offering his head, his brain section for that matter, the brain section that the tiger would have loved to devour. And the tiger is just uh, petting that monk. As a transformational leader, trust is your greatest asset. Your people must be willing to be vulnerable with you and trust that you will bring them no harm based on the information you have about them. So we remember the questions five and six about either you trust easily or people trust you easily. It would be nice if we, are, we have caveats of people earning our trust and we also can make ourselves available to be trusted. It's all about reflection, planning, executing, measuring, communicating, coming back and reflecting. So that's it about this one. This is, um, we're getting deeper now. Critical factors for us to be effective as transformational leaders, self-awareness <laughs> and self-development. It's a life learning. Life learners make the best transformational leaders. And some of them actually have a sense of humor, you know, that laugh at themselves and not feel bad about it. So like this place is like a junction. We have an old way and a new way. We have looked at the confirmation of concepts. We have looked at the ingredients and all that. Now we're going to look at ourselves. And all of us have come to this session with the way we have always been. I hope that the following sections will help us to look at how we've always been and see if there's anything we can tweak or anything we can enhance or we can have a validation <laughs> of what we have always been doing. Uh, first things first is that it is not, transformational leadership is not an event. It's not about status. It's not about power. It is a journey. It's a life journey. It's also a matrix of relationships. That's why we need the people skills. And it's also about solving problems, solving problems for ourselves, those with us in our inner circle and for the community that we are. It's also about growth of self and others. It's about positive impact. All this on the left-hand side, we can only do more effectively if we are very clear about ourselves. If we have been able to define our values, what we hold to be true, unapologetically so, the vision of what we aspire to be, strategy, clarity of what we want to achieve, and what, even if we don't have how, at least we have clarity of where and what. And then the activities and the steps can be what we can take away from sessions like this and when we read books and all that. Another aspect, if we remember that picture that I said of transformational leadership about the crystal ball held like this and um, reflecting the environment and having the balance of the landscape and the pool or lake, this picture is a, is a place at which I want us to just take a mental break and hold all that we have heard and technically swallow it <laughs> and reflect on how far we have come because transformational leadership is about points of reflection and it's also about milestones in our life where we sit back and say, okay, this is how far I've done, this is what I've done, okay, which one is good?
Compost term is going to be another point of reflection. If we do that periodically, we'll find out that we're actually growing and we're growing in a very constructive manner. And the interesting side that it depends on the timing. Some distances are short, some distances are longer, and it's okay to be like that. So that's it. Transformation leadership has a lot to do with reflection internally. And in my work with leaders, I've come across some sometimes that many of us, maybe because of our society, maybe of course of our exposure, some people cannot actually sit by themselves in their house for a day without talking to anybody. It's like inability to sit and face self. That is a very um, troublesome thing. And many of us that had that challenge during the lockdown, we had a lot of cases of um, mental health that were very extreme. Ability to withdraw, reflect, and disconnect is very important. Many leaders of thought have that habit. And I, I hope that we would intentionally develop that our society does not give us that, and we're always active during doing things. And as leaders, we're always taking care of others who never remember to nurture self. So this is a set of questions that I developed. And the more alignment that there is in the responses here, the more peace and comfort the person will have and will be able to draw in others. Because if we're having trauma and struggles within, uh, self takes most of it and we're usually not empathetic as leaders and transformational leaders are people people we can see in our people and say oh what's wrong with you your face is funny today but if we're engrossed in imbalances internally we will not be able to see that and we come across as dispassionate so the questions are who am i as an individual what do i hold to be true about life career family and society what is my mission as a citizen of the human race. What is my personal vision about what and how I, what is my family or inner circle vision? What are my strengths and weaknesses? How do I see myself within my vocation or my career? What is my career's expectation of me? What does society expect of me as one in this vocation? What are my organization's mission and vision? What are the similarities and the differences in my personal vision and the organization's mission? Are my organization's values aligned with my personal values? At this point where there's an misalignment, it's advisable that we jump free ship because we'll not be putting our hearts and mind in such a place. But if we find one, that means we'll not be inspired by how things are, but we keep going because we find ourselves in the mission and the vision. And am I intrinsically driven by my organizational values? How can I keep growing and adding value to myself, my family, and my vocation? Given that every dream I have will crash if I'm unhealthy, what do I need to do to stay healthy for as long as possible? This is a very important slide. And if we don't remember anything, if we can take this and pull it out and answer these questions very I think we'll have some life decisions. The picture on this slide is about perspectives. The picture of an African lion framed on the wall. And there's a Siamese cat <laughs> that is looking at that picture. They are both cats, all right. And they're both similar colors, but they're different. And tries to confront, sees a lion tomorrow and tries to confront that lion. That Siamese cat will be breakfast. But if this Siamese cat looks at the behaviors of the Lion King in the, in, the, in the forest, and in that household where that cat is, it takes up the attitude of a Lion King in that compound. If there are mice in that compound, they will see this cat as the Lion King that is on the wall. So for us as individuals, self-awareness is very important. And, and, I, and, I, and I think about Juhari window. How many of us have either used... Uh, have completed Johari window for somebody. If you have, just raise up your hand. If you have completed Johari window or you have 
completed it, completed it for somebody or you have had it completed for yourself, please raise your hand digitally. Let's see. If you have either completed your Harry window assessment for somebody or you have yourself had people complete it for you. Johari's window. Okay. Okay. One person. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Lange. <laughs> uh, Monsieur Francois. Okay, he has done. And anybody else? Uh, okay. Mr. Oyetinji Demola has done that. Thank you very much. Johari window, let's just, uh, let me move us forward. Johari window is the image on the left-hand side. It's on the internet. It's a couple of questions. If you can just pull it out and share it around to people around you and ask them to complete it for you anonymously. Later, you, call, you receive the feedback, look at them, analyze them, and react to it in private. That's a gift to yourself. Many of us as leaders, it, it, this is the graphic uh, impression of Johari window is in four quadrants. The public arena, is our area of celebration. Having this session today, I'm here. This is a public arena because I know myself that I know some of these concepts. I, I am knows that I know some of those concepts and invited me to come and speak here. But there are areas that is unknown to others. There are some other aspects of my life that I didn't put in my profile that you might not know, which is unknown to others, but is known to me. Then there's another aspect of unknown to self. I don't know whether I can run four diameters in three seconds <laughs> because I've not tried it. But if there's katakata, we need to run for their life. I might find myself at that speed. That is unknown to self and is also unknown to others. That is completely unknown. But the one that is unknown to self, these are many leaders fall flat on their face because of suboptimal self-awareness. Others know about it very well. Like for instance, tendency to do some things that are negative. And people just know that leader does that thing, but the leader has no self-awareness that that is a problem. And the leader does not have people who are loving enough to flag that, or the leader does not receive feedback. Some people don't like feedback. Feedback is a gift. <laughs> and transformation leaders actually seek feedback. And it helps us to see what is unknown to self, but is known to others. And if it's negative, we work on it and we improve. So this is a very good tool and it's highly recommended that we look at it and see how it works, especially when we relate with people who are responsible for some processes. And even when we don't have responsibility, we're trying to find, like, I don't know that I don't know how to sing. And I say, I want to become, a, I want to go to Grammy for a record around what but I feel that I can see, but when I start seeing people hold their head, that's that's a very big disaster to Harry Window. This is what to share my own journey. It's been a very interesting one. It's still starting by the grace of God. God gives life and good health. The picture on the right-hand side is a mountain climber and it's not in summer or spring, it's winter or it's snow. We all know that if this mountain climber does not have equipment that is right. If this mountain climber is not careful to hit the rock at the right places, crystal balls can come, crystals can come down and those things are sharp and they can be very little. So it's a very delicate rope to, to, to walk, but with skill, with learnings, with lessons and concentration, it's possible. So these are moments, things that have come across that have been like, aha for me. One is that our leadership journey, if, if we cannot see, you know, systems change, things transform organizations, countries, entities, even ourselves, even our environment, even our families, we change over time. So how has, we'll pack this because we're going to do it as an actual exercise. How, I want us to ask ourselves, how has our leadership journey been over the past 10 to a dozen years? The fact is that no individual organization or system is static over this period of a decade. That's why they even require that you do a census after every 10 decades and you update things like your constitutional framework. And that's why also 
you have corporate plans, you can plan for a decade, but you have to break it down into quadrants. If one is unable to evolve along a leadership journey over a specific period, such a person is most likely not capable of adding value to the system in which they are because the system has transformed. I came across MBTI some couple of uh, years back. MBTI is, is um, Mayor's Brick type indicator of personalities. I went for a program and they asked me to complete that. And they also asked others to complete other instruments about me. It gave me a personality profile. And I didn't, I wasn't even aware of how I was transforming until after a few years, I went back to another advanced program for that uh, concept. And I did an MBTI and the result came out with a change. So I became conscious about it and I made a decision to do it at certain milestones. So this is my transition that I will share with us after this slide. So that MBTI was an aha moment for me. The second one is on the left-hand side, epitaph. I met the concept of epitaph on the first day of my doctoral program. On the whole agenda for that day, morning session nine to 12 was epitaph. Ah, uh -uh. then we'll go for lunch, then we'll come back. Then 12 from one to four was epitaph. What is that? We came into the hall and we were told that we have three hours to write our epitaph. And three hours to write an epitaph, which is one sentence. And they said no more than 12 words and each word must not be more than 10 alphabets. Three hours to write one sentence about what you will be described as. Epitaph is used for announcing obituaries or being written on a tomb, on the grave. So we left, after lunch, we came back. They now gave us another three hours that you should write what you'll be doing and how you'll be behaving from today onwards, that whenever that epitaph is required, whether it's the following week, 20 years down or 50 years down, that you'll be worthy of each of those 12 words that you use to describe yourself. What that program did is that when you finish it, you don't need anybody to tell you thank you or well done. You have been driven by something eternally and you're not waiting for naysayers and all that once you have conviction that what you're doing is right. The other one on the right is the eyeglass exercise. I went to a leadership program. Is that same leadership program where I got the MBTI. So they gave us this exercise. After we finished talking about leadership, leadership, everything, we had this exercise. It was just a room with a table with four sides. And we're about to finish. After this session, we're going to be looking at each participant doing his own. So we have looked at I just want to be assuring us in terms of timing, we didn't start on time, that we started with the concepts and then we looked at the importance of the concept. Then we now looked at the milestones, the landmarks and the ingredients of that concept. Now I'm giving us as a transformation leader, the things that made an impact on my own journey. Then I'll now look at, I'll show us that journey. So that exercise we had was a class, a room with a table with four sides. And at each side of those tables, there was a chair and there was a notepad and there was a pen and there was a pair of sunglasses. Somebody saying something? All right. There was a pair of there was a pair of sunglasses. Those sunglasses were the same make and the same frame and the same color. The instruction was we get we got into the room on the seats were numbered one, two, three, four, so that when you come by, you don't sit on the same chair. So as we go in, the coordinator told us that she brought out four envelopes, one, two, three, four numbered, they had paper inside. She didn't show us the paper. She said, we should look at number one, two, three, four. She'll be showing us at instances. And then we're to come in and sit on a seat. And when you sit on that seat, write the number of that seat on your notepad and take your pen. Then she'll tell you to put on the glasses. Once you put on that glass, you don't talk. You put on the glasses, then she'll bring out paper of the paper. Don't talk. You write it on your notepad. You put your notepad back, and then she take away the paper and you remove your sunglasses. We do it three or four times. By the time you do it four times, you find out that you yourself, you have written blue, red, green, yellow. And what happens is that when we came back later, she said we should take off our glasses. She brings out all the four envelopes 
and every time it was white sheet of paper. But if we look at our paper, we're writing blue, green, red, yellow. The concept was that the color of the paper depended on which seat you sat, and that each of those glasses, even though they are the same make, the same color, the same frame, the lenses were different colors. And you saw the paper color depending on the seat that you sat. And the topic was about leadership and influence. But if we're a leader, tendencies most times, the leader wears a pair of glasses and tells the followers, hey, why don't you see that? Don't you do that? Don't you do that? You guys can't see anything. You're not thinking this, this, this. No, they're thinking. It's just that you're not wearing their glasses. <laughs> Maybe you'll be more influential if you wear their glasses and bring a solution that they can see their own color inside. So for instance, management, operations, marketing, everybody's screaming and all that. But the whole thing is that we're all on a mission. So for a transformational leader, you want to carry everybody along. You have to learn the art of mentally sitting in other people's seats and wearing their glasses. Perhaps they're not as wrong as one would think. Finally, these are two tools I've used, the soul strategy. Anytime I'm, I'm given a job, even while I was a management staff and I was working in an organization, I always look at my job description and make sure that I bring these aspects into my job description. I must serve the right strategy. What's our organization trying to achieve? What's our department trying to achieve? I must own the leadership, functional leadership in my function, even though I'm not the head of this thing. My role is to support that head. And if I don't own that process, then I will not be able to add value. Then I must leverage learning and I must value the vision. Remember our question that we had about self-processing and I must evolve in, in, involving technology. I had a story about that when I was in PwC, we had this dongle we had and they were giving it to the partners, but I needed to be able to work and close early and go home and do something. And those partners had those dongles that time we didn't have the network. They could work anywhere. My colleagues were saying that only partners had the, and directors had dongles given to them by the firm. I said, I wanted one. They said, I was a manager. I'm not entitled to one. I said, how much is the dongle? They said, 40,000 naira. I paid. My colleague was like, are you crazy? <laughs> Why are you spending your money? But I was using that to ensure that I invested in myself. I delivered and I did that. So sometimes we need to make that personal investment. And at the end of the day, I think on that my grade, normally take five years. I took 18 months and then I was promoted. So that, 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 that issue is very important, irrespective of the level of the organization that we are. And then I came across this ISPI. Auntie Akonji, Dr. Akonji, Dem Akonji knows this very well. She championed it while she was in the central bank. ISPI, these 10 standards have become my, my gospel for tasks. Um, when I receive projects or I do things, if I cannot work it across these 10 standards, I say I'm not there. Or I negotiate and ask them to restructure my agreement to make sure that I can show this. That's how I can show that I've added value and I've transformed something. Then there's no, when I do that and I show the result, then we can't, we don't have to discuss the fees because you can see value and it goes like that. So with all I have said about myself, this is how I have transformed over the past. I'm talking about my own like 20 plus years. Well, what I've said is, what I've shown here is from 2000, 2002 to 2009, I was head of HR develop, development in a bank and I became a consultant at PwC. I was leading units. That time when I went for that program, the first time in Colorado Springs, my MBT, I came out INFJ. I was introverted, intuitive. I was feeling and judging. Feeling was what had changed over the period, but other things seemed to have remained the same. Because at that time as HR, I was defending the people, I don't, I, you know, making a case for the people and everybody so that our score as an employer brand, employer brand is fine. When I became MD of FIT, I went back for this program and I had it with my colleagues in management because I wanted us to have, because we have almost 1,570 stakeholder institutions. When I did my MBTI, I had transformed from introversion, intuition, and feeling to thinking because now I had multiple stakeholders and I had to think fairly objectively, but I remained judging. Then when I finished my work at FITC and I took a break, I went to INSEAD and I started publishing and uh, international consulting. I was in a learning mode. And then I got new information 
and I was not managing stakeholders anymore. I had become an independent consultant. I became more extroverted because I have an opinion about things. And then I remained intuitive and I was still thinking, but my judging had shifted. It became perceptive because I was now receiving different, different issues and I was changing space. Then when I repeated it in 2021, that was like two years after leaving FITC. I had adjusted, you know, back almost. I was still extroverted. I was still intuitive because sixth sense is very key in my perspective. And I was still thinking, but I had moved from perception to judging. I seem to have validated my right or wrong. And now I am holding on to that very firmly. So that's that's how I have changed. Am I still the same person? Yes, I'm still the same person. Most things have remained the same, but some critical things of how I see the world relative to myself and relating with people and stakeholders have seemed to have shifted a little bit, but I'm still the same personality. And it happened without me intending to do that. It was situational and I was like that. So it would be nice if we can plot our own. I did mine 20 plus years, but I recommend in, in the action planning, I said five to 10 years. So that's what has happened. Now we're going to turn to you as we close. Everything I've said, is all internal. If we remember, we just spent a few slides talking about concepts, but other things are about our habits, our behaviors, our perspectives. And I shared my own story. As part of transformational leadership, you need to be vulnerable to show that you're also learning. Now we're going to explore your journey. And this picture on the right is, is like that for a reason. I'm talking to IIM and different people that have logged in. The issue is that I used technology, the screenshots, but it's laid on a background of society. All we do as professionals and all that is to make impact on the system. And I hope that what we are going to talk about now will just make the light bulb go in our minds. And I would like to remind us that we have in this process looked at transformational leadership as a journey we have looked at the importance of self-awareness and questioning ourselves. We have also looked at the Johari window and how it will help us. The picture on the right is a lady on a hill looking at the a landscape and seeing her journey. How would she move as a camper and, a, and, and, um, and an exploratory person? The image on the right hand on the base is a navigation tool see where the landmines are and then how to navigate our path. We've spoken about the importance of writing our epitaph. I sincerely wish and I encourage us to do that. When I saw that exercise, I did my Nigerian bragado. I said, no, 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 no. I didn't want to do anything. The professor came and said, oh, Lucy, do you have a problem? I said, yes, I have a problem. What is the thing? I said, I'm from Africa. We don't talk about death. She said, oh, really? In that case, I will see you tomorrow. I was like, what? See me tomorrow? She said, that's what we're doing in the afternoon. So with that, after some time, I scolded myself and I settled down to do the assignment. So it's kind of funny for African to write epitaph, but it is a good exercise to do that. And then after that, we'll look at the ED4, SP, and the SWOT plus. ED4, SP, and SWOT plus are concepts that I got registered and copyrighted. And then I wrote a book around it. I'd used this for a couple of years for clients of mine and they have, I've also used it in my family and people seem to love it. So I said, okay, let me make it available to everybody, especially looking at Africa. So I would share this with us and then we'll see how it will help us to the SWOT plus to validate our Johari window findings and to narrow our space. And then ED4SP will help us to define our platforms and the projects that we'll choose as leaders. This thing was very helpful to me uh, when I came across it. I'm aware that we're about to get to an hour now for this session. I'll soon wrap up there with me we're at the end. Um, the Bloom's taxonomy, because we are in IIM, so I'm thinking information. In Bloom's taxonomy, we see the hierarchy of value upwards, remembering concepts, 
which has to do with recall of facts and basic concepts, understanding, which has to do with explaining ideas or concepts, like some of the things I've done since we started speaking here. And I've also used the remembering to remind us of certain concepts. Now we're doing the applying side, which is using the information and the news uh, situations to look at what we'll do. You, by ourselves, after this session, we're going to analyze what we have learned and what I've taken in and evaluate what we want to do. I want to create our own journey. But this process is also applicable to our space in terms of our rise in career, uh, in career and in terms of income possibilities. I'm sharing this because I know IIM is also trying to support members to grow in their career and do more. So this is linking Bloom's taxonomy to risk and reward in terms of career. And this model was developed by my friend. His name is uh, Major Prabha, retired. He attended, he lives in Malaysia. He actually attended the virtual book launch of um, African Leaders Tete -a Tete. He developed this some years back and I extended it. So I give him credit for that with the extension by me. It talks about Bloom's taxonomy and the relationship between complexity of decision-making, the level of income and risk of decision. This, um, this margin talks about reward in XXX plus plus dollars. And this talks about the risk. When we are early in our career, we are doing analytics and all that. As an analyst, as a junior uh, staff, we just pull up the facts, make sense of it and flag it up for management. At that time, our income is, excuse me. <coughs> Hmm. At that time, our income is low and our risk is also low. As we rise in management, we're beginning to make analysis, make recommendations. Our income increases, but the risk of a wrongful analysis and application becomes very expensive and it can cost us the job. As we reach management, senior management executive, our income is multiplied geometrically. At that stage, we are evaluating and we're advising the organization to take a decision or we're advising our clients. If it works, we are good. But if it doesn't work, some can end in lawsuits. And later on, in advanced situations, we can actually create platforms and systems and models and merchandise them. And people can buy it. And sometimes we can have investors. But the risk is also extremely high if those models and systems fail. So I just wanted to give us that progressive opportunity as we are going to talk about our platforms. Now, this word plus, all of us know strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat. But SWOT is like a cliff edge. When we finish our analysis, what next becomes an issue. So what I developed this model is to extend it and tie it into budget and timeline. So which we can use for strategy planning that has timelines. So I came up with this. Remember the questions we were to ask about our weaknesses and strengths. If we do it very well, we'll find it very easy to fill this template. Recommendation is that whatever is our strength and our weakness, they are internal to us and they're on the left-hand side. At the base is what is a threat and an opportunity in our space as leaders, that's in our career, in our family, in our country, and all that. Whatever we are very good at that is a strength, but there's a threat outside, that means we can confront it and we can exploit it. If we confront it very well and have solutions to it, remember the progression of analysis, development, and, and, and creation. We can move into here. This is the ideal place to be all the time, but most times, at least 25% of the time, where we are known, now we are good, and we have solution, and there's a market for it, and we're required. If for any reason we have a weakness and there's a threat, for instance, there are new certifications, new skills, and we didn't get those new skills, and our industry is requiring that skill and we have not gotten it, we're in this red box. And the danger of this red box is that our job role can be terminated. We have seen what has happened to Google and all of them, even the um, Morgan, JP Morgan and all those people. So this 
is some of the things that has happened to some of those people, their job roles are being eliminated because either there's an upgrade and they don't have skills for the new area, or there's a transition in that business. Remember the, the, the PwC survey, when we find ourselves in this place, we are to look at the opportunities in the system, learn such and get the skills required because there are opportunities so that we can move up here. So, and there's a timeline that is recommended, indicated inside, and our resource allocation to these things. By sharing this and uh, this slide and the next one, I've technically given us the things that are in African Leaders Tete Tete, pages 50 to 80. This is uh, ED4SP, how to design ourselves and our life as an entity, as a transformational leader. Most people, when you talk about entity, they think it must be an inanimate object, maybe an, uh, an organization or something or something, something, but not a person. But I took it on a personal level. In African Leaders State Tate, I took the leader as an individual. I took the leader in an organization. I took the leader in a country or a cluster of sub-regional blocks. And that's the image. Mandate, strategy, structure, policies, platform, people, culture. And I said, these are the killers, these two people and culture. And the fact that we're here, it means that we're actually dealing with the people and culture issue. Mandate is what you seek to achieve. If we did that assignment with the African lady thinking, we'll finalize this. And strategy is how we plan to attain the mandate to what end. Those are the issues about mission, vision, and all that. Structure is how we'll arrange the various roles that will be required in the pursuit of our mandate or strategy. What relationships? If we don't have it, we have to intentionally start to create those relationships. Policies are what are the values? If we answer those questions very well, our values will come very clear. Platforms, what are the levels of engagement, application, storage, retrieval? In that case, we start looking at the professional networks and the platforms where we position ourselves, add value, and in that we're building skills and we're making impact, which we will now take and build, put in our institutions or wider society. People are, what type of people do we require to play various roles for us? We need mentors, we need bosses, we need colleagues, we need your family to see how they will support you on this journey. Culture is the social contract we have and how we leverage on this to define the people we admit and how we separate in the process if there's no alignment between us and them. Then the systemic and institutional risk and capacity is what the issues, what are the issues that we can compromise and what can we not compromise and how will we continually identify this and mitigate against them so that we don't end up with these people and culture behavioral issues that can actually kill the whole thing and bring us down. The conclusion is the more it's important for us as transformation leaders to be more authentic self. That is how we even differentiate ourselves and have a brand that now gets a value. But if we look like everybody and behave like everybody, you really cannot be an individual brand. Now we're closing. And in the next five, 10 minutes will be done. So at this point, I would like to close by giving some advice and hopefully passing the baton that we'll continue on this journey and everything I've said so far will make sense for us going forward. The advice I have with your consent is that I have some 10 things that I found very important. And some of them I've shared on this um, session with us. Understand ourselves. It's very important to understand ourselves. We need to love what we do and let it be a mission to serve. And we should constantly evaluate our behavior and actions. We should ask for feedback where there is none and be approachable as individuals. We should think collectively, not individualistic. That's, there's a reason why we're on earth and we're not living alone on an island. So let's optimize networks you know, and not be reinventing the wheel and wasting time and resources. We should live an exemplary life, you know, we should do what we expect others to do to us and look at somebody that is just coming up and say, when I was at that stage, how would I have wanted to be treated and be that person? Use our skills effectively and constantly develop our skills to meet the trends so that we will not find ourselves in that red quadrant of SWOT plus. We should radiate positive attitude. We should not accept impossibility because innovation is the key. And if we're able to look at things objectively, uh, we're likely to be first to market. 
And let's not forget also that we are all one family, the human race. If there's anything that's taught us that we are one family, is the plague of 1918 and COVID-19. It didn't know race, it didn't know class, it didn't know status. Faith is important. You know, logic and evidence has its place. The faith takes us further. And it also gives us energy. Even when everybody is looking morose, you'll be energized based on faith, hope, and peace, you know, and calmness. The last one is self-care. Self-care is maintenance. We maintain our cars, our equipment, our laptops, our everything. But let's remember to maintain ourselves, our body, which is the machine that we use to become effective leaders. Health is important for effective leadership. Read, 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 and read. I've used some concepts in this book, and I have a disclosure that I'm the author of that book. It's copyrighted. It's registered in the U.S. Library of Congress, and it's also available on multiple databases and global databases, and it's also available even in Nigeria at Roving Heights bookstores. This book is very nice. I've read it, and I have it on the bookshelf. You know, It's about um, we all need to have a toolkit of models to guide us in practical living. Uh, it has 52 intellectual uh, tips on thinking and deciding better. It may not guarantee us a good life, <laughs> but it will give us a better chance at it. And I have read that book and I have it on my bookshelf, but I have a disclosure. I don't know the author and I have no benefit from promoting it, but I'm just saying that it's a very good book and it would be nice to look at it. This is Kintsugi, uh, it's a Japanese philosophy. Many times as individuals, uh, we want to hide our imperfections, we want to hide our errors, but our errors that we have made and we have learned lessons from, they can actually be powerful instruments of transformation where we can share the story of our experience. The book is um, talking about the Kintsugi principle whereby uh, you see in the Japanese uh, methodology of embracing imperfection. You know, it's applied in ancient principle to our lives that we will learn how to repair ourselves, rebuild our life and love our flaws. And our flaws could actually be a stepping stone. In the Kintsugi culture, when you see a glass plate like this that has all these gold streaks, it's usually more pricey than one that is very smooth and unbroken because when it, but the plate breaks, they use this gold strip of adhesive to join it and anytime it breaks again, they use it. So by the time you see a bowl that is broken, broken, it's usually very pricey and highly revered because it has survived many things. And sometimes in life, many of the challenges that come are just to prepare us to do greater things. I love this book extremely well, uh, so much, but I don't know the author personally, and I have no gain in promoting, but I just know that it's a good book. Now we're closing, final, final. Uh, this is our action plan with all that we have said. And it's very nice that today is Wednesday, you know. Uh, today's Thursday. Yeah, today's Thursday. Let's look back at the transition over our career, our life, five to 10 years or more, depending on where we are in the spectrum. Sketch our own leadership journey. How have we transited over the time? And how has our perspectives been? And what is the most important thing for us at this stage. Things that are important to us at this stage may not be what is important in five, 10 years to come, but let's dwell in it, celebrate it, and see the best thing out of it. We should also write our epitaph. It's a good exercise. I have come from the days of my throwing tantrum and saying in Africa, we don't talk about death. If we talk about it, it happens. I wrote this thing in 2003. <laughs> By the grace of God, I'm still here. So, that, okay, actually, that's more than 20, 20 years ago. So work out a plan to ensure that whenever that epitaph is required, that time they say if it is required one week or two weeks or 50 years to come, that we will be worthy of each word that we have used to describe ourselves. Since I did that thing, I owe nobody apology. I go ahead with my matter and it helped me to choose where I will work, projects I will accept, people that will be my friends. Plan to be driven by this each day and always allow ourselves to breathe and smile. I thank you immensely for your rapt attention. I'm very conscious that we're way out of time, but I hope that I've made some sense in our conversation. As I said, this is the reference for those who want to read further. And 
this is where I live. I, I live in Lagos, Nigeria, and this is where Nigeria is in Africa. I make a habit of doing this anytime I'm speaking internationally. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucy. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much ma'am. So ma yeah. That was a beautiful presentation. I've learned a lot. Thank, thank you, you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, 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 so ma thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Messi Boku Kusalaga. I'm able to. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you. It was really impactful. Thank you. Can you increase your volume, please? Okay. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Lucy. It's been very impactful, insightful, deep dive. This is beyond the uh, free webinar. Huh? Uh, I know that you will have to raise, and uh, we have our trainings coming up. This is a serious transformation thing for everyone, because it's always a journey before you become a fellow in the Institute, right? And so you are going to keep the nail out of the head, preparing people, preparing everyone of us that are still there, those of us that are still coming up, those of us that are there, Sustainability in career, going back to reflect by using the Irish window is a super one. Uh, this is the third time I've heard the Irish window. I'm a fan of Brian Tracy. You mentioned Brian Tracy, that was great. And super nice to meet you, Dr. Lucy. This is good for the Institute and for everyone of us here, I believe. Dr. Lucy, I'm not seeing questions. What I'm seeing are comments, comments, uh, gratitude. So, and you know, when you have uh, a top notch presentation, all the questions have been answered within the presentation, right? Well, can, can you hear me? It's someone who said no volume. We can hear you, but it's not that loud. It's not loud enough. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, my earpiece. So thank you, Dr. Lucy, so much. Um, I am not seeing questions. What I'm seeing are uh, good congratulatory messages. And uh, this is great, insightful, impactful. This is it's too much for uh, an hour. This is uh, for those of us that want to uh, go further, you might have to reach out to the Institute for the courses. Transformational leadership in information age. Um, like I said before, when you were hearing me, there's need for us to balance our life. I've heard about the Irish window and I'm hearing it again, and I'm seeing a different perspective to it, which is insightful. Thank you, Dr. Newman. Thank you so much. So I think um, all I'm seeing here are like all our appreciation, Doctor. There are no questions. There are all our positions, our positions. This is superlative, super. You know? All right, thank you. So um, I will call up on uh, the other council members that are here to quickly introduce themselves. Mm -hmm. um, after that, um, a lot of people are requesting for the presentation. Well, uh, you write to training at im.africa.org. We will check your status, then we'll decide to share with you or not. Okay, so we we we'll call on the council members. They are starting from the president. Mr. President, please, you can unmute yourself. Uh, after Thank that, you, the vice president. Thank you, Mr. Nago. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Lucy. We are indeed blessed tonight. In fact, from the comments box, it's obvious that uh, the presentation is top notch. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, my name is Ambassador Dr. Yedoko. I'm the President, Chairman, Governor Council of the Institute of Information Management. I want to say a very big thank you once again to Dr. Lucy. I want to thank you all, you know, for being attentive. You know, uh, for a very long time, we have not had 
you know, audience um, above 70 sitting for over an hour like this. So that goes to show the level of impact that this particular session actually had on the attendees. I think Dr. Lucy, if I, let me, let me think aloud. Uh, we should have um, like a leadership workshop on this, you know, for you to come talk to some top government officials, CEOs and so on and so forth. Maybe we'll take that outside of this. Um, I also want to use this opportunity to thank um, our executive council members for all their support, for their contributions, you know, for being there and um, also making time from out of their busy schedule, you know, to ensure that the Institute continue to support our members and also, you know, uh, going all out to ensure that um, we're able to create the platform that would help professionals across the globe to achieve their, you know, career objectives. So thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, we look forward to having all of us around again next month when we shall be having another wonderful, you know, topic for discussion. So on that note, I want to, um, you know, leave the floor for all the executive members here present, you know, to say one or two. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank okay, you. So Thank you so much. So before the next executive member speaks, I think there's a question, Dr. Lucy. Someone, okay. someone is asking regarding the MBT that why is the S not there? Does it have to do with that is from um, MBTI? Yes, MBTI. So why is the S not there? Okay, it, it's what I am, <laughs> what it says I am. Exactly. Some other people will have S, but in my own case. I was not um, having that as a battery that came back for my feedback. The um, FNN, uh, the, the, the batteries I showed were my personal batteries after filling the, the, the assessment. So some other people, they give you the questions based on what you respond to. It might come back with a different, and the person might have a lot of SSS. But in my own case, it's always four, four batteries for each person. And those were my four on the various occasions. Okay. All right, that is for my Mafruz uh, Abu Bakr, who was asking the question because he was like, he didn't, uh, he didn't explore the sensor type. Would you say yeah. that the S trait is bad? Yes. So my, you my, in my own case, it was the intuitive aspect that I had, uh, the sixth sense. Uh, yes. Most times when I want to take a decision, I sit back, I reflect. I meditate and then I come back with a response. Some people don't do that and they might have the sensing. But me, I have the sensing, but I draw from internal uh, the intuitive side. For some people it's the sensing and that's okay for them. That's their personality, but I didn't have that. And the intuition, you have a little bit of the sensing, but the deeper and but you're not triggered by what is in the environment, but you have that time of reflecting and getting internal. So I have the intuitive. Some people have the sensing. Okay, thank you so much. So um, Karim Sali, you said you would like to know more about you. Is it about the Institute or about Dr. Lucy? Just put a comment there. No. We'll get to that. The Institute. Karim Sali is my nephew. He's my sister's son. Oh, <laughs> He's a grown man. He's a man. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Thanks for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, Princess Wolade, if you are there, please over to you, so, Vice President, please. Princess. Hello, Princess Tiwalade. Are you present? I, I saw you here. You are here. I don't know whether you're having difficulty with your microphone. You know. Princess, are you? Yes, she's online. Uh, let me... She's online, yes, yeah, she's online. I can see her. I think she might be having issue with her microphone. Yeah, I think so. Princess. There's a, tra there's a transformation leader in the house. She's been silent. She's Dr. Akonji. She's doing awesome things. <laughs> yeah, I know Dr. Akonji very well. You're a great member. Okay. Um, Princess seems to be, I think she's having an issue with her, with her, with her, with her mic. As a vice president, Princess 
Swala de Fafuga is our vice president. She's also online, but I think there's an issue with her mic. Um, we are we now. also I can, I've entered now. I can I've okay. entered. Yeah, I was about looking for you. What are you I you actually found idea? it difficult. I actually found it difficult to unmute myself. So mm -hmm. I had to call Dr. Yedoku. Sorry, I think I mute. I'm sorry, I had to mute all and uncheck. No one can unmute themselves. I'm sorry for that. Because everyone was kind of muted, muting themselves. Yes, I know, I know. I All right, well, I thank to you. God I'm able to come come out. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Princess Tualade Fakunda, the Vice President of this great institute, Institute of Information Management Africa. And I'm the Vice President. I support the the president to transform the mission and vision of this great institute into reality and god has helped us to achieve a lot on this i would like to commend the presenter dr lucy i must Thank commend you on this practical superlative and valuable presentation very impactful and insightful presentation you did so well and as a woman i must say I'm very proud of you, and thank I'm you. happy to be a woman. <laughs> I cannot but also thank uh, Dr. Yedokun. From your presentation, uh, <laughs> Dr. Lucy, I may, I know I'm very right. I, I'm not wrong, but you can tell me whether I'm right or not. From this, your presentation, I would like to conclude that Ambassador Dr. Yedokun is an example of a transformational leader. Absolutely. True or false? Absolutely. True or false? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. Yeah. <laughs> from your from your from the discussion, from your explanation, I was just thinking and thinking on how he has been a transformational leader as the president and chairman of the Institute of Information Management Africa. Mm. His leadership is highly motivational, inspirational. In fact, sometimes when we don't believe in ourselves as yeah. members, he believes in us. What we thought we cannot do, he will encourage us and make sure that we got, we got it done. And mm -hmm. I'm a living example to that. So mm -hmm. I would like to thank uh, Ambassador Dr. Yedo Kwan as well for yeah. being an example of a transformational leader. Yes. Congratulations, sir. I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. And to all my ESCO members, I thank you also. I thank uh, Mr. Nago for being a great uh, MC, a great uh, MC of this occasion. He really moderated everything very well. I'm also proud of you. And for everybody present, I thank you for your patience. You have been very, very patient and engaging from all the responses on the chat box. I concluded that you were also active. You are not a passive audience. I'm also proud of everybody. So congratulations. And for those that are not yet members of this institute, you can see that Dr. Lucy's presentation has already invited you to join this institute. Mm -hmm. So you are most welcome. Any, if you have any question, you are free to ask. Thank you very much. Good night. God bless everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. May, thank may, you I, so much. may I seize this opportunity to thank mm -hmm. my sister? I was on, I was just unmuted. The mm -hmm. organization muted me. I couldn't speak. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lucy. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you. Thank you, Mark. Thank I you. appreciate you. Thank you. An inspiring leader. Contributed thank so you much. Very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. A special thank auntie. you. <laughs> <laughs> my regards to my brother. Yes, you were here. Okay, <laughs> bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please, I'm not done. Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was one that muted Dr. Lucy and Dr. Akanji to enable her to speak. Yes, uh, thank you. So, Dr. Akanji, thank you so much. Um, so, I'm here. Uh, my name is Ambassador Alexander Wanaga, also Executive Council Member of the Great Institute, yes. your moderator for today's event. Thank you so much. And again, please, just to for us to round up, 
you have to turn on your cameras. We need to take a group photo. Please mm -hmm. turn on your cameras. It's very I, important. As we do that, um, I also want to um, recognize the presence of some of our board members in the UK, in Canada, they are also online. Um, we have Pastor Felix Akonjola. I don't know if you can unmute him. Pastor Felix might have one or two things to say. He's one of okay. our in the United Kingdom, we have uh, Mr. Tilade in the in Canada. We also have Professor Rotimi. Professor is also a member of the board in the United Kingdom. So uh, we want to unmute them. They might have one or two things to say. We want to thank God for tonight. Uh, Dr. Lucy, you, you have been wonderful. Jamie. Thanks a lot. Thanks a Tell lot. Me, thanks mama, a lot. Prepare your food. The lecture has been impactful, inspiring. Uh, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, we want to see more of um, uh, lectures on leadership. And I believe that um, the Institute is doing fine and we are going places. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Ambassador, the President, for inviting us thank you good night everybody god bless you thank you thank you sir. Um, you have the floor. Uh, yeah good evening to everyone and uh, thank you uh dr newman uh i think i've listened to a lot of leadership programs undertaking leadership development but you've made this so easy to understand from where you start and how you get to the pinnacle of that mountain. You've made it so easy. Very, very impactful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Madam Rosalie, please, if you are on, if you're still there, Madam Rosalie, um, let's on, try to unmute you. Can you check your mic? You need to unmute. Mr. Nago, thank you, you very much, my president and all council members. I really enjoyed the lecture. The lecture will help me to be a good leader. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so please, can we turn on our cameras so we can have the group photograph, digital group photograph, right? So please turn on your cameras. Tell us your comment, please. Mr. Tilade. Oh, yeah, I want to thank Doctor because uh, the president observed something. I also observe it. We have seventy-seven people at the close of this meeting. It shows that the lecture was fifty-three people. It shows that the lecture was meaningful and people are not ready to go. So thank mm -hmm. you very much, Doctor Lucy. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, and we've stayed well beyond time. <laughs> thank you. It was the it was the wait, man. It was the wait. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Please, can we turn on our camera now for the digital group pictures? Thank God for technology. So, after first group, we, we kind of have like three pages of the pictures. Please, if you don't mind, just bear with me. Aha, uh -huh. I see Shola. <laughs> Shola, everybody. <laughs> Um, for the second group, we have like three pages of the pictures. <laughs> In the first one, second one. Third one. We have the last one now. Third one. 
Right. Um, thank you so much. I think we've had the pictures. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we encourage you to join our May webinar, which is also going to be very impactful. Thank you, Dr. Lucy, for your time and for the great presentation. And we wish everyone a good night rest and hope to see you next month. Uh, Dr. Nagy, we can also seize this opportunity to invite us all as uh, the Institute will be having um, boot camps will be starting at the end of this uh, month. We have been document control, we have knowledge management, we have um, geographic information system, data privacy and data protection certification, and um, you know, quite a number of programs that we have actually appeared. So it's a great opportunity for us all to you know, be part of this. Then we also have a public forum on Telegram now. So I'm using this opportunity to invite us all, members and non-members of communities have opportunity you know, to access resources and information on our Telegram group. So our link to that, um, you know, we can share with you. Probably at the end of this session, we'll send a follow-up um, email to all of us. Uh, we'll be delighted to have you on board. Our Lagos induction is also around the corner. May 13th, we're going to be having our annual conference at the University of Lagos in Akoka. Thereafter, we'll be heading to South Africa. Where we'll be having the 2023 um, annual convention in Pretoria. And uh, quite a number of other programs that you can actually access on our website and on the IIM uh, calendar. So thank you everyone for your time. We look forward to seeing more of you. Have a wonderful night, trust. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm almost Trinity. I saw myself <laughs> in another place. <laughs> so if you bring a third one, I'll have Trinity, <laughs> three, three Lucy's. <laughs> thank you, thank you all. all right. No, but thank you. Bye. <laughs> good night. Thank you so much, Ma. Bye. Good night. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.